Hello, welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Tuesday, the 15th of October in the year of our Lord 2024. Glad you can join us as we take time during our day for God's Word and prayer as we do. Uh, we are now back to the New Testament. Again, we've switched over. We're including readings from the New Testament on Tuesdays and Thursdays of each week. Uh, we began that last week and that brings us today to Matthew chapter 3. So we'll, uh, we'll skip from uh, Jesus as a, an infant or a very young child. It's not clear exactly how old Jesus was when the wise men came and visited him and worshipped him. Uh, but we'll jump from that stage to age 30, roughly, as he begins his ministry. It, it, he's preceded, of course, by John the Baptist. And we'll read about John the Baptist very briefly before seeing the event, Jesus' baptism, that, that marks the beginning of his ministry. Uh, so that'll be the reading. We'll come back to it in just a second. Beyond that, we'll use the format that we've been using for about a week now uh, with the psalm. We'll use Psalm 2 today. Uh, the Apostles' Creed, the reading, uh, and followed by a short meditation. And then uh, the prayers following, again, our weekly outline of prayer requests. And then closing with the Lord's Prayer. So that's the plan. Uh, looking like everything is working as it should. So I think we are all set. Okay, let's begin. Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son, Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way where his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. It is a beautiful description of the honor due to our Lord as he rules over the events of history. God has, in fact, given kings or earthly authorities um, the authority that they exercise. And yet he invites them to kiss the son, honor him properly as the ruler of all, uh, of all, the, of all creation. Uh, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Uh, whether they choose to or not, whether the authorities choose to honor him or not, of course we know that he was chosen for that, for that position, he was given that authority specifically because he was willing to suffer and die for you. Let's confess the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Matthew chapter 3. In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit, in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John, to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. As far Matthew chapter 3. All right, so I'm torn which part to talk about, which, which part to consider today. I do love the, the account of Jesus' baptism and I'm sure I've shared with you several times now the, the importance of this event. Why would he feel the need to be baptized? Well, obviously it was not because he needed it. It was because you and I needed it. He says it was to fulfill all righteousness. Part of what that means is that he puts his righteousness into the water for you to receive as you are brought to the waters of baptism. As I believe it was Luther said so beautifully, he puts that voice from heaven, this is my beloved child, into the water. So that that voice is now addressed to you as well when you are brought to the waters of baptism. Uh, just a, a beautiful moment, possibly a little, a little perplexing to some, but you never go far wrong by, by assuming, by taking it as something that he did for you. So I think that's sufficient for today. Let's take a minute for prayer. Uh, the, today's devotion is pre-recorded, so I'm not able to invite you to submit additional prayer requests. I did not, in fact, uh, invite you to submit additional prayer requests. Um, God willing, on Thursday, we'll be able to resume that. But in the meantime, we'll continue with the prayers that we have. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your deliverance, for 
your faithfulness to your plan of salvation. Uh, it is interesting to pair the psalmist's words in Psalm 2 with the account of our Lord and the beginning of his ministry uh, to be able to see through the, script, through the words of Scripture uh, the Son that you commended to us to humbly submit to in Psalm 2. Uh, to see the one who is ruling, uh, the one that God the Father has set on Zion, his holy hill, to rule over all things. And what a humbling revelation to see that, again, he received that place, that authority, because he was willing to suffer and die for us. Uh, we pray that you would in your mercy, deliver us from all temptation, deliver us from every evil. We pray that you would strengthen us in the battle against sin. Give us the strength that you gave us. Bless us with the full strength that you gave us in baptism, being joined together with Christ, joined in his death and in his resurrection, living now a new life. Grant us your grace to live in that promise and, and to resist the temptations that come. Father, we also pray that you would be with those who are battling against addictions, who are tempted to despair, who are suffering from injustice. The evils in this world are many. We groan, like Paul says in Romans 8, we groan, we yearn for the day when Christ will come once again, not in humility like he did the first time, but in glory bringing your kingdom directly and fully and finally. We pray that you would strengthen us, strengthen those battling addiction, despair, to, uh, in, injustice, whatever those sufferings might be. Pray that you would strengthen them and, and deliver them, that you would set them free from their addictions and set them free from the temptation to despair. And also we pray that you would watch, watch over those who are mistreated and help us to make this a more just world. Father, we bring before you the many among us with specific needs. We pray that you would strengthen the weak, that you would comfort the hurting, that you would heal the sick. Whatever their needs might be, we pray that you would meet those needs as only you can. We bring them before you now silently in our hearts. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend all of these for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, in the name and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
As always, thank you for joining us as we take time during our day for God's Word and prayer. A little bit shorter time than usual, but time for God's Word nonetheless. It, the, the point is not how much time, but, uh, but the, the strength that we derive from hearing God's Word and, and gladly uh, holding it sacred. So, sanctified by that Word of God and prayer, go joyfully to whatever work He may have for you. God's blessings on your day.